So in today's notes, we're going to cover circles in the coordinate plane. So the equation of a circle in center radius form means we're given the center HK, as we can see here, and the radius R. So let's actually add center H. Okay. So if you think about making this a right triangle, the right angle would be here, and the difference right between our y values is this segment is a, a rise segment, would be the y minus k, whatever that is. And the horizontal segment here would be the difference between the h and the x value. So that would be x minus h. So in terms of a squared plus b squared equals c squared, it's um, a squared, so x minus h squared plus b squared y minus k squared equals r squared. Now with the center at zero, zero, okay, we're still going to do that x minus the h, which would be zero, and that's why we end up with the x there. So really, this should be, instead of the hk, I could write zero, zero, because the center is at the origin. So the difference between x and 0 and y and 0 would just be x and y. So this equation is just a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is the radius. Now these two formulas or equations I would put on one of your index cards. So in the first example, number one, it says to write the equation of each Circle. So take a minute and note the center and radius for each circle. All right, so note the center here, which is negative 1, 1, and this center is at 0, 0. We have a radius, so come from the center of the outside of the circle. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4 units, and then here, 1, 2, 3 units. So this is going to line up with this one, and this uh, circle lines up with that equation. So we're going to do x minus h, so it's x minus, remember h is the x side of the center, so we're going to subtract negative 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals r squared. So you subtract the negative 1, so our final answer is going to be x plus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 16. Here, we don't have to do the x minus the h because it's 0. So it just ends up being x squared plus y squared equals radius squared, which is 3 squared. So final answer is x squared plus y squared equals 9. Now I want you to pay close attention to our... Um, Answer is given the centered radius. So when the center is a point, you can see that was a negative one for x that ended up being plus one in the equation. And that was a positive one that ended up being a minus because we're subtracting. So given the center and radius, you'll see the same two numbers here, just opposite signs. When the center is zero, zero again, we won't see any two numbers being subtracted or added to x and y. And then the n number is always the radius squared. So write the equation of each circle in number two. Then we have a multiple choice question in number three. Write the equation of each circle. So circle A is the center and radius. So as we said, if that is a positive one, it's going to be x minus one. 
squared is opposite, plus, that's a negative 8, it's going to be y, plus 8 squared equals radius squared, and 7 squared is 49. With the center is at the origin, it's just going to be x squared plus y squared, and then radical 6 squared. So you can do that on your calculator if you wish. Um, so let's actually move it so you can see this with quite the glare. So square root of 6 squared, which is just 6. When you square, okay, when you square, I'm not going to write radical 2, but radical 6. When you square a square root, the square undoes the operation of square root, so we're just left with 6. And then which is an equation of a circle whose center is 2, 3? Remember, if that's a positive 2, it must be x minus 2 to start. So these two are out. Then y plus 3, they're both y plus 3, n is equal to radius squared. Well, this one's equal to 4, so that's out. 4 squared is 16. So that's our answer for number 3. And number 4, find the center and radius of each circle given the equation. Well, if it's x squared plus y squared, the center must be at the origin. What number squared do you have is 25, radius 5. Center here, well, nothing's being added or subtracted, so it's 0, and then the opposite positive 1, negative 1. And that's a 3, which is not a perfect square, so the radius is going to be the square root of 3. So to go backwards, we can take the square root of 25, and remember, we're never going to have a negative radius, so we wouldn't see the negative 5. Okay, so general form. So this form here is center radius form. General form given the center and radius is if we multiply out, right, these factors. So we start with the center radius form, we multiply it out, and then we get the general form. And the general form, if you highlight, must be set equal to zero. So I would put the general form on the back of the index card where we wrote the two equations of the center radius form. So let's start in number five, okay? Because we're going to write the equation circles shown below in general form. And let's first write it in center radius form. So the center is one, two, three, four. One, two, three. We have a radius of three. So in center radius form, it would be x minus four squared plus y minus three squared equals nine. So now I'm actually going to expand and multiply. This would be x minus four times x minus four plus y minus 3 times y minus 3. And we want to set equal to 0, so we move that 9 over, it becomes negative. And now I'm going to multiply it out. So multiplying these two binomials, it's x squared minus 2x, not negative 2. 4 and 4 is negative 8x plus 16. Multiplying this out, it's going to be y squared minus 6y plus 9, and then we have minus 9 equals 0. So if you look up here, we have the x squared and the x term. So it's x squared minus 8x. We don't see the numbers because the numbers are all combined to one number at the very end. So then the y squared, then the y, and then we've got 16. Well, here are positive 9, negative 9, and the additive inverse, that becomes 0. So plus 16 equals 0. So this is the general form. So you first write it in center radius form, and then write it in general form. And then last, we can use completing the square to change a circle given in general form to a circle in center radius form. 
Just add two boxes to each side and complete the square for both the x and y equations. So we have two trinomials for x and y, okay? And it really should be not equations, but expressions. Or we could say, um, eventually they'll be trinomials, so expressions is probably good now. So let's take and start with the x's. So it becomes x squared plus 8x. Okay. We're going to add the box. We're going to complete that square. And then we've got y squared minus 6y. Add the box. Now, the radius is on the other side, so we have to move that negative 75 over. So that should be equal to positive 75. And then add the two boxes here. Because if you add two boxes on the left, you must add two boxes on the right. So to complete this squared, okay, half of 8 is 4, 4 squared is 16. So this becomes x plus, this is why we reviewed this during the essential skills. It's 4 that doubles to 8, and 4 that is squared to get 16. So x plus 4 squared plus, okay, we have to complete this square. So if it helps to think of the binomial, it's going to be 3 that doubles to 6, remember it's the same sign as the middle term, and then 3 squared is 9. So add the 16, add the 9, and we get equal to 100. So we complete the square to note the center. So I look here and here. It's the opposite of the number. So opposite positive 4 is negative 4, and opposite negative 3 is 3. So our center is negative 4, 3, and our radius is 10. Because 10 squared is 100, or the square root of 100 is 10. So we're going to finish by doing this one more time. So once again, this is in general form, and we want to write it in center radius form so that we can see the center and radius. So we move the C over, and then we're going to start lining up our x squared terms, add in the box, the y squared term, or the terms with y, add the box, and then there's the 7, negative on the left, it becomes positive. And we add our two boxes. And then we will write it as a square. So it's x because that's plus, that's plus. It's 5 that doubles to 10, and then 5 squared, 25. It's a negative 2 that doubles to negative 4, and negative 2 squared is 4. So 25 and 4. 7 plus 25 is 32. 32 plus 4 is 36. Now we have a center, opposite of positive 5, negative 5, opposite of negative 2, positive 2, and we have a radius of 6. And our last question today, we're going to grab a circle. So you can have your compass ready, because we want to be really precise. So in order to graph, just like you would state the slope of minus up for a line, we're going to state what the center and radius is. So given here, I mean negative 1, negative 3. And our radius is 4. So to graph, we start by plotting the center. So at negative 1, negative 1, 2, 3. We're going to use that radius of 4 to go right, 1, 2, 3, 4, left, 1, 2, 3, 4, up, 1, 2, 3, 4, and down, 1, 2, 3, 4. In the graph, yes, we use our compass so we can get a perfect circle. So, center of the circle is where my compass point is, and then pen at the radius. I'm going to tighten mine up. And now we're going to graph the circle. You have to use your compass. 
because you're not going to get a circle. A circle is a set of all points equidistant from one point or the center. Okay, and since it's the one circle we're graphing, we don't need to label. And that is it for our notes for today.